we're against abortion because abortion kills humans and we think that you should not do that. But a lot of people don't believe that's our motivation for opposing abortion. They think we don't really care about the lives lost and we're just saying that to cover up our more nefarious motivations. Usually the motivations they think we're covering up have something to do with enforcing certain sexual norms or trying to push women to their biological destiny of being mothers or something like that. The people who think these things usually don't seem to be aware of, much less able to explain contradictory evidence. I'll give you a couple of examples. First of all, there's the issue of contraception. The activists who oppose abortion, they do it with a ferocity and tenacity and passion that you don't see anything close to when it comes to contraception. Not at all. Nobody cares if women want to get tubal ligations or if men want to get vasectomies or if you want to use condoms or whatever. Nobody cares. Even the kinds of contraception that people do object to, like the pill or Plan B or certain IUDs, it's because they believe those methods cause an abortion, because they believe they prevent the zygote from implanting. And that motivation, that they object to it because they think it causes an abortion, comes back to abortion and not contraception. Gallup polls Americans on whether they think a variety of issues are morally acceptable or not, and they have consistently found that contraception is the most accepted issue they talk about, and abortion continues to be very controversial. It's not the same at all. If opposition to abortion was really a cover for trying to control people's sex lives, you would see more equivalence between abortion and contraception, and it's not there. Second, think about how the pro-life movement talks about adoption. If anything, we get criticism, I think rightly earned, for being too glib about adoption. And as soon as a woman expresses concerns about the pregnancy or being able to take care of this child, there are pro-lifers who are like, oh, just adopt, just adopt. The fact that some pro-lifers are so quick to suggest adoption emphasizes that their goal here isn't to make the pregnant woman become a mother. If she doesn't want to be a mother, okay, just don't abort the kid. Another example is the way pro-lifers react to women in stable, happy marriages who want to get abortions. If this whole thing was really about enforcing certain sexual norms and not about the lives lost in abortion, then pro-lifers would have a lot less objection to women getting abortions who conceived in a stable, happy marriage because they had the right kind of sex. Instead, you see basically the opposite reaction. Instead of pro-lifers being like, oh, well, she had the right kind of sex and therefore I don't care if she gets an abortion or not, they tend to be more heartbroken and frustrated and concerned because someone who had a better support system is still getting an abortion. Because it's not about what kind of sex they had to get pregnant, it's about how they don't want them to kill the child. And if right there you wanted to say, well, it's not a child, it's a fetus, you're missing my point. We are talking about the perspectives of pro-life people and what motivates them. And from the perspective of pro-life people, it is a child. And the gender roles or the sexual decisions that preceded the child's existence are not the point. The point is we don't want you to kill the child. That's why we don't object to contraception to prevent pregnancy. We don't object to people placing their children for adoption. And we do object to abortions for children conceived in happily married sex.